Hello, welcome to the video for what is the material, the time node. Let me go ahead and pull up this quick little example here. I actually have nothing hooked up, so we're going to cover this from the start, and we're going to cover what the time node does and show how it works. So, right here I have, let me actually go ahead and we'll pop a one into here just so we can get our original texture back. So here's our original texture, it's just a little badge. So we have our time node. Time node can be accessed by right clicking and pulling up time. You're going to find time in the constants section. Basically time is going to represent the passage of time and it is constantly being updated at all times. So like right now, for example, this could be 200, it could be a million, it could be whatever value is currently set up as the time. When you start the game, it's going to be roughly based on the game time itself. So we'll start at zero and move up. So it's a constantly increasing number that you can use as a variable input for your material. So that is one of the keys there. So Time can often be used with, for example, a sine or a cosine node, and it gives you kind of like a waving effect. But to show how time itself actually works, we're going to make it where it's a 0 to 1 value, and I'll show you the basics. So for time itself, we have no input, but we have an output. We have two properties, ignore pause and period. Ignore pause, basically, if you call a pause on the game engine, it's going to pause time, it's going to pause, physics, and things like that. If you have ignore pause checked, it's basically going to continue advancing time for this node, regardless of the game being paused. So that's useful, for example, let's say you have a pause menu, and you want some sort of an animated banner, or maybe a, a loading progress bar or something on the pause menu. So while the game is paused, you still want this material running, you would go ahead and you would ignore the pause. So, that's what that does. The next one is period. Period by default is disabled and basically it will, your time node will never wrap around. It's going to constantly go up. Zero, one, two, three, in fractional values of course, but it's going to continue going up. It will never restart. If you use the period, Basically, this is the period at which time wraps around. So, for example, I have it set to 5 here. That means it's going to count from 0 to 5. Once I hit 5, it's going to reset back to 0. And it's going to count back to 5, reset to 0, and it will continue infinitely. So it gives you a way to hard cap the value that time outputs. By default, it is not enabled. So, for example, we are going to cap. put this at 1. And we're going to show you how this works. I'm going to use the multiply node, and I'm going to multiply the output of time into our multiply node, and our result here is this texture sample here. Now, keep in mind, multiply basically will multiply the value by the other value. So if my value of time is 0, which is black, multiplied by my texture here, we're going to get an all black texture. So that's why you're seeing this texture here, pulse. Basically, it's starting at 0, going up to 1 every second, going back to 0, then going back up to 1 every second. So you're going to get this black to start with, and then going up to white, which is going to give us our actual texture's appearance. So that's an example of how the period works and also how the time output works. If I was to uncheck this, we're going to see a dramatic difference. We're going to see nothing but white. Because this value in time might be a thousand right now. And a thousand times a texture is basically going to give you a thousand times white and it's going to completely blow out because I have it set to miss it. If I was to put this into base color, for example, and let it run, we're just going to see a solid white because it's completely blowing out. So let's put this back to emissive for my example. And let's show you period wrapped up to something like five. So it's a little bit more clear. It's going to start at 0, which is black, and then it's going to slowly multiply. So let's go with 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and then back to 0. Obviously my counting isn't correct, but as you notice, it's the white parts are starting to glow. These black parts are starting to become gray because we're multiplying black by a 2 or 3, which is raising your black value. So 
that is showing you time actually having an effect on this multiplying. And it's constantly running, as you can see. And I have it set to reset at 5. So you're seeing a good way of using your time. Now, your time, it is, again, it's just an output value. You can choose to do whatever you want with it. You can choose to let it continue to run. You could take our time, for example, and plug this into a sign node. And then output this. And what this is going to do is it's going to end up, let's uncheck our period here. And using the sign node, basically, it's going to continually rotating our image using a sign and go black, white, black, white, black, white. And that's just the way the sign node works. It's basically taking the input data, plugging it into sign, multiplying it. And as you can see, our time data is continually going. So that is our time node. As you can see, it's pretty simple. Basically, it's just outputting a value, and you can choose to do whatever you want. And if you want to basically be used as a limited value, go ahead and set the period. Sign only takes a 0 to 1. That's why you can see right now it's really, it doesn't matter that my period's 5 because sign only takes 0 to 1. So that's it. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them below.